tell us about, did you grow up in a musical family? Yes, I did grow up in a musical family. Uh, dad played guitar, wow. uncle played guitar and bass, grandpa played guitar. Grandpa played guitar. Great, my, my grandfather built guitars. My grandfather, Frank Montagna, built nylon string guitars as a hobby and played. Mm -hmm. His father played uh, guitar and mandolin. In fact, I believe my great-grandparents met at a party. My, my great-grandfather, Raphael, who came to this country in 1907, okay. uh, became a barber by trade, right. but he was an amateur musician, played the mandolin, mm -hmm. I think, and met my great-grandmother at a party okay. on Mineta Street. So playing guitar does get girls. Absolutely. Uh. Yeah. So um, <laughs> my mother's also a concert pianist. My parents were actually in a band together for many for a couple of years uh, while they were dating and when they were first married. And to this day, when I hear a Fender Rhodes or a Wurlitzer, I, I found out years later that my parents, were, when they were in the band together, my mother was playing a Wurlitzer when she was pregnant with me. So to this day, I hear a Whirly and I'm just like, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, so they were in a band together. Music was always around. Oh, you come from an incredible music. Yeah, band. yeah, and a lot, and they were music lovers too. Yeah, a uh, lot of records, a uh, lot of you know piano scores, a lot of guitars. Did they it was play Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett. Uh, no, my parents are a little younger, little younger than oh, yeah, that. Okay. My dad, I, I inherited oh. the Beatles disease Ooh. from my dad. Okay, um, and I mean, I was named John Paul, for, you know. For that reason. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know you were John Paul Montana. Yeah, I stopped. I for I was doing that for a while when I first got into Led Zeppelin, mm -hmm. and the bass player was John Paul Jones. Yes. I thought like, there's no more rock and roll name than John <laughs> Paul something. So I started using the you know it was I was 14. Mm -hmm. You're looking for an identity. You're looking for a, a hook yeah, as yeah. a teenager to be cool. So I was John Paul Montana for a couple of years <laughs> there. And there are there's a handful of people that have known me long enough. Yeah. That there's certain groups of people that call me JP. To what this the day. heck made you gravitate towards bass? I knew that, vaguely that it was the bass that Paul played because I was a Beatles obsessed yes. toddler. Right. Like one of those, like those kids who were like all about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Like if they'd had like themed birthday parties in those days, like they do now, yes. it would have been all Beatles stuff. Okay. So I knew that I knew that Paul's guitar only had four strings on it. But that was about it. Advanced. And I kind of vaguely knew, <laughs> yeah. And I knew some of the, like, doom, 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 right. doom, 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 doom. Like, I knew some of the, but I didn't really, I, I didn't really have a conception of what it was. My dad hands me his brother, my uncle, uh, my old, his, his old uh, Dan Electro Longhorn. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was like, what is this? He goes, well, it's the top four strings on the guitar, just an octave lower. Mm -hmm. And, I, and immediately I was like, oh, okay, I got that. And I just, hitting the root notes of the chords, you know, I, I, I wish I could tell you, like, from the moment I got it in my hands, it was a revelation. It really wasn't like yeah. that. But then I started paying attention to bass players. Besides McCartney, there's what I call the Mount Rushmore. Yes. So McCartney, Ant Whistle, John Paul Jones, Jack Bruce. Right. Um, and... Don't forget, this is the 80s now. Yes. So it was 1984. It's a great decade for bass players. Correct. Yes. You had John Taylor. Paladino. It's, Pino Paladino. Well, you had a lot of bass playing front men. Yes. You had Sting. You had uh, Richard Page from Mr. Mister. Mm -hmm. um, you had Mark King. Right. You had all the guy Haircut 100. Those front yeah. players. Uh, Kajak Goo Goo. Totally. One of your favorites. Totally. Um, and then R and R and B. You, you know, there were a lot of guys doing the bass. Was a brothers Johnson were exactly right. exactly. Okay. Um, something clicked at that point when I saw what bass players wow. did. Something about like the weight of character. There was also. Do you remember a TV show called Rock School? Yes. It was on PBS. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was an English show mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and. I don't know what the I don't know what the this bass, is the bass guitar. This is, is the it? bass guitar. We're going to move on to the fretless now. <laughs> I've got a phaser pedal. It sounds like this. Oh, yes. My that, favorite show. There was just something really cool about that. And you thought that was cool. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, well, right. I was twelve. All right. Everything's cool when yes. you're twelve. You know. <laughs> um, and then I saw. Give my regards to Broad Street. Ah. 
the McCartney movie right, in the theaters. Right, for about a day. Well, yeah, but you saw it on that day. Again, yeah. I was 12. Right. Keep, in, keep this in mind. When John Lennon was murdered in cold blood in the streets of New mm. York, I was eight. Mm. Okay? That's like, it's like somebody killing Spider-Man mm. to, a, to a child. Sure. Okay? So by 1984, a movie with Paul McCartney in it is the fucking coolest thing ever. Can I curse on this? I'm yes, sorry. Yeah, okay. And the, so, and the music was great on that record. And, Stanley, Stanley Clark is on that record. Stanley's on no, Pipes of Peace. Doesn't he do no, that's Louis Johnson. Oh, that's Louis on it. Stanley's on the Pipes of Peace album, okay. though. Uh, but you're sort of you're on the right on track. The right not to track. not to be like all Rain Man about yes, the McCartney you, you thing. Gotta be, you gotta be. So, um, <laughs> so and watching, you know, because I again, when Wings Over America was happening, I yes. was four. I was right. not going to go see Wings at the Garden. No. But in the movie, there's the band rehearsal scene right. That's because the best part. Cause, you know, typical day, uh, recording studio, recording session, film shoot. Video. <laughs> I mean, it's That's like the, life, the, yeah. there's like a week's worth of shit going yeah. on in one day of this yeah. guy's life. So the band rehearsal scene, and it's Ringo, Ringo Dave Edmonds, Chris Spedding, yes. uh, Jody Linscott on percussion, okay. and and Linda, and and Eric Stewart, right. and Paul's playing the Rickenbacker mm. with the natural finish, and just Paul on the big screen playing the Rickenbacker and singing. I was like. Yes, <laughs> yes, because the band rehearsal scene happens about halfway into the mm -hmm. film. And throughout the movie, McCartney's feet do not touch the ground. He's like Superman. He's like the Godfather because it's like every it's car waiting for him. He gets out of the car, throws the keys to the roadie. He's like, he's, he's the coolest. So he's already a superhero in my mind. But then halfway through the movie, he's rocking the, the, the Rickenbacker. And w with this giant band, and that was like, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. And from that point, and then I might have seen like a, like, again, this is the 80s. It was mm -hmm. no YouTube. Right. I it was none of that. Well. It was really, you had to luck out and see like a vintage clip of something. And I guess I'd seen Ant Whistle by this point. I think seeing Ant Whistle on Live Aid okay. was, a, was another yeah. moment because Townsend's jumping all over the place. Daltrey's jumping all over the place. They're sw dripping sweat. Yeah. Ant Whistle has got a leather jacket on and this Alembic and just, but I'm hearing this <laughs> stuff and I was like, yeah, John, okay. And then, and then it was Sting. Oh, Live Aid was a bass player, Shuggies, John Deacon. You right, had, uh, right. Marcus Miller with uh, Brian Ferry. That's right, yeah. that's right. Um, and then you'd see Sting. Mm -hmm. A lot of, lot, so in those days, it was a lot of fretless yes. stuff. Oh, yes. Uh, and a lot of synth bass yes. as well. But it, I, I wasn't prejudiced against the synth bass okay. thing. I mean, something like, let's hear it for the boy. Don't, right. don't, but don't, don't, no. You know? <laughs> um, and this is also years after Stevie Wonder doing all that synth bass right. yes. stuff. Yeah, the monster bass. Yeah. Um, so what was the question? But now you, let's <laughs> <laughs> You can catch additional episodes and much more by visiting us on the web at knowyourbassplayer.com. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time here on Know Your Bass Player. Mm -hmm.